Welcome to the studio, it's Froyal here. I'm so glad you've joined me. Today we're talking about three tips to help you find inspiration for your artwork. It's also week eight of a hundred days of collage and our theme is travel. Yay! Finding inspiration for your art is really a lot easier than you think. <laughs> Baby, you just need to relax. <laughs> I'm serious. Long walks on the beach or walking your dog through the park. Finding places that you can relax will increase your inspiration for your art because you won't be stressing over it. I actually find the number one place for inspiration for my art is in the shower. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm serious. <laughs> Maybe because it's first thing in the morning and my brain is actually awake and not tired and exhausted by the day. Or maybe it's because I'm trying not to think about anything. Maybe it's the soothing water or the warmth of the shower. I don't know, man. I don't know why, but I get my best ideas first thing in the morning, in the shower, always, always, always. And then I have to run out, towel wrapped around me and quickly write it down before it evaporates like the steam. <laughs> So sometimes I even take my phone into the shower so I can type down some notes real fast before, yes, I forget about it later. But truly in the shower is the place that I find I get my best inspiration first thing in the morning. So you have to find where is it that you are relaxed, you're chilled, you're hanging back and you're allowing your mind just to unwind and allow those beautiful creative thoughts to flow. Number two tip for increasing your inspiration for your art is using prompts. At the moment, I'm going through 100 days of collage and yes, it's taking me longer than 100 days, but I'm making 100 collages. <laughs> I have 14 prompts. If you've seen the list, which you can find on my website if you want to join me, there's 14 different themes or prompts that I'm working through and I'm doing seven collages for each theme no matter how long it takes me. And this week is week eight and we're up to travel. What I like about using themes or prompts is that I know exactly what I'm going to make. I'm going to make seven collages on the prompt of travel. It'll probably take me a few weeks because I want to show you some really cool, inspiring scenes from my recent travels abroad. <laughs> So you're coming with me. But even if it's not this prompt, the last prompt which I did was time. I made seven collages in 10 minutes each. That was so much fun. You should have a look at that video. It really was fun. Completely different artworks, totally abstract, quick, fast collages, and they'll be completely different for what we're doing today. So the benefit of using prompts or themes is that it gives you something to focus on. It gives you something to work with and something to be inspired by. So our theme of travel today is going to be inspired by the recent trip that I did to Europe with my beautiful little treasure. We were on the fabulous Viking Jupiter, absolutely glorious ship. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. The furnishings, the luxury, everything's matching. I love matching. I absolutely loved it and we travelled from Barcelona, stopped at a whole lot of countries and finished in Bergen in Norway. So today we're going to start with Barcelona. What's not to love? Beautiful city. We walked around the streets and through the city we found the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art. Oh man, that was a whole lot of fun. We walked down to the port, it was a beautiful day and then the next day we went to Sangrada Familia, which is the magnificent cathedral designed by the architect Antoni Goldi. Now, the Sangrada Familia has a longer name than what I can pronounce, but it's roughly translated as the Temple of the Holy Family. It's an unfinished Catholic church. Actually, it's the largest unfinished Catholic church. And what a vision the architect had. He knew he wouldn't be able to complete the project in his lifetime, and he left strict instructions for other architects and builders to follow his designs. When Goldie died in 1926, the basilica was between 15 and 25% complete. What a vision the man had. <laughs> 
The church is still under construction today, but even at this stage, the building is truly magnificent. The incredible interior is breathtaking. And the stained glass, seriously, it's a spiritual experience. So today in the studio with all of this beauty and inspiration, we're going to play with some jelly prints in the theme of stained glass and let's see what we can create. So number three, oh, you're gonna have to wait for number three. <laughs> Let's make a mess, let's throw some paint around, create some jelly prints, and I'll tell you number three as we go along. Right, so I've pulled out my fabulous gel plate, my 10 by eight, the one that I've been using for the alcohol ink. It's getting nice and stained. It's a little sticky, I know, I think I should clean it. <laughs> I've got this fabulous uh, stencil from PM Artist Studio, it's called Dragonfly Wing Stained Glass. So doesn't it look like a stained glass design? Yes, I'm loving it. So this is the inspiration today for this particular prompt of travel with my glorious Barcelona theme. And I'm going to pull some gel prints with some alcohol inks on this fabulous gel plate. Now, if you've watched me recently, you might realize that I've only just begun playing with alcohol inks on the plate. I'm definitely no expert and I'm really experimental and basically I just try a few ideas and have a go and if it doesn't work, well, we try something else, right? So, so don't get too stressed out about experimenting with your ideas because they don't always work and that's okay. Now I'm going to throw some beautiful alcohol inks. I was thinking of using these because they're so beautifully saturated. The colors are so glorious that I think it gives justice to the fabulous stained glass idea. But it may or may not work. I can't guarantee these things. You'll just have to <laughs> keep watching and see if the idea does actually work. I'm just going to put some on the gel plate with this fabulous stencil, brayer it around a little. I'll probably need to let it dry just a fraction and then let's see what we can create. What about some metallics? We need some bling. I'm thinking so. How about a little rich gold? That could work. We'll just put it in some areas and see if it actually looks any good because I really honestly don't know. Oh, that's going to look nice. Yeah, I'm liking that idea. The alcohol inks dry pretty fast on the plate, which I really like. So I'll pull the stencil off. Look how pretty the stencil is. <laughs> that's awesome. And I'll let that dry and then we'll pull that print and see how it goes. And then we'll try some other ideas. Well, I think it's mostly dry. I'm thinking of trying, um, pulling it with matte medium because I've got an idea of wanting to keep that stained glass look about it. So if I put a color over it, it's not gonna have that beautiful see-through look. I haven't actually done this before, so if it doesn't work, oh man, it'll be all right. We'll just try something else. I'm going to pull the print on glass seam again because I'm thinking I'd really like that see-through glass look and I think glass seam would work really well for that. Righto, so let's see what we got from that little experiment. Man, I hope something comes off the plate. <laughs> Oh yeah, I don't know why you were so worried. Oh, beautiful. There we go, look at that. Our first experiment of creating stained glass. It has got that see-through look about it. The glass-like look, it's got the fabulous marks of the stained glass stencil and that's not too bad. At least it came off the plate, right? <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. So let's try a few other ideas because that's all right, but I'm pretty sure we could do better. I'm thinking perhaps this time we could create just a little more contrast. The colors looked good, but we need a bit more impact. Baby, a bit more boom. So, <laughs> so 
I'm going to put more paint on it this time, more of the alcohol inks, because now I'm not so scared. Now I know it, it is actually going to work. Uh, you know, that's good. That, that's working. So we'll put a little bit more on this time and perhaps some more of those fabulous metallic colours. That could be good too, because the gold turned out quite good in it. Rather impressive. Maybe some of this one, which is metallic brown. All right, let's try that. Let's see what that does. Because the metallic colours did come through on the print. I was a bit happy with that. And I just want a little bit more drama. It's not enough drama. <laughs> we, we need more drama. But I personally like um, contrast. So that's probably why I'm looking for some more it's all right if you don't. You don't have to like what I like. It's okay. We can still be friends. Oh, loving that. What's that one? Yes, rich gold. Of course it is. So I just splashed some rich gold over here. That worked really well in the last print. Righto, I think I've thrown enough alcohol inks on the plate. I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes, pull the stencil off, and then we'll try printing that particular print and we'll see how we go so when i pulled the stencil off perhaps it wasn't as dry as it could have been because i kind of lost this middle piece in here <laughs> well i did get a little heavy handed with this ink this time but not to worry a little hole never stopped anyone i'm going to pull it this time with some iridescent bronze fine and see how that looks because the color should fill up the area of the lines of the stained glass and I'm really keen to experiment with that idea and it will fill up the hole that I made by being impatient <laughs> don't worry about things like that it's all an experiment anyway right so we've got the beautiful bronze on there we're going to use glassine again and see how this one looks all right, let's see what we get from this idea. No, oh, it's not too bad, not too bad. I do like the beautiful bronze underneath. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, that's a bit fun. Having the metallic bronze underneath those fabulous colours of the alcohol inks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But, you know, I'm still not loving it. I still think we could do better. So I'm going to pull out the big jelly plate and bust a move with some paint. We've got beautiful bronze on the table. So let's start with that. What about if we just use the glorious bronze, put the stencil down and had a look at the fabulous shapes and designs of it. So that's that. Put the bronze on. Put the stencil down. Now let's pull the print with some black paper because then we can just have a look at the beautiful design of the stencil and that seemed like a fun idea. Oops, don't worry about the smudging on the sides. <laughs> oh yeah, look how beautiful that looks. So that's just using the stencil straight onto black paper. Or cardstock it's not really cardstock I think it's a black paper that looks beautiful now that looks more like stained glass so maybe I'm just missing the black lines in the other prints that aren't making me very happy because this is making me a lot happier righto well then we've got the fabulous ghost print what will we put the glorious ghost print on let's just put it on some rice paper and then we can always color in those shapes we can add some paints to them. That would be fun. Yes, liking where this is heading. See, you've just got to try an idea and then try another idea and keep going until something really inspires you. I liked the black lines of that paper. So mm, I'm thinking let's do that again because that was fun. And now we've got the fabulous ghost print of this one in the bronze. And we can always add some paint and some color to this beautiful paper. Yes, that'll work. Look at that. I could easily paint in those shapes, which we just might have to do.
Okay, what about if this time we put the beautiful stencil down first, we add some paint to the stencil. Now, remember, I'm experimenting. <laughs> little bit of warm color, little bit of gold. I mean, the colors in the stained glass were so beautiful, absolutely incredible. Incredible blues, incredible reds. It really was an amazing experience. I'll add a little bit of copper. Just giving a little bit of white around my edge where I made a bit of a mess. And then I'm going to pull the stencil off and take the print on my beautiful black paper. Straight down onto all of that fabulous paint. <laughs> Yay! Oops! <laughs> Oopsies! <laughs> Don't drop it! Oh, that's fun! You see, now that looks more like the stained glass that I saw. Much happier with that idea. That looks just beautiful. And if you look at this, there's enough on that ghost print to take another print. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to pull it with, hmm, I'll have to think about that. What colour will I pull that print? So I was thinking about going with a dark colour on the pool, but I think I wouldn't be able to see my beautiful colours and that would be annoying. So I'm going with the bronze. Let's see if we can pull up all of this fabulous paint with our beautiful iridescent bronze fine. Righto, let's see how that pulled. Oh man, I don't think it's gone so well. Oops, maybe I left it on the plate too long because it's not doing well with my fabulous rice paper. It's catching and it's not really working at all. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> man, that stinks. I think I actually left it too long on the plate because I got sidetracked. I'll show you what I was doing. I put the plate aside and now my paper is totally stuck. And that just stinks. But it happens, right? It happens. Oh, look how good it would look <laughs> if I could get it off the plate. It would have looked amazing. <laughs> Not to worry, that just happens sometimes. These things stick, especially if you leave them too long on the plate. Well, it would have been amazing, but yes, it's stuck. And I still have a nice, fabulous ghost print on there. I could still try again, but oh man, no, that didn't work. But the idea works, right? Yeah, it does. So this is what I was working on when I left the print too long on the plate and it stuck. I painted in this fabulous print with some pearlescent watercolors and look how beautiful that looks. Oh man, that's so stained glass. I'm loving it. That worked really well, but the other print got stuck. Mm, shall we try one more? I think we should just try one more. So let's just have a play with one more idea. With my last video, I had a few comments saying that I could spray the back of the rice paper. It would bleed through. So I'm going to try that idea and see how that looks. I really like the black lines. I know it's quite thick on the plate because um, I want the ghost print left to be quite thick and that's okay so i'm going to try putting the beautiful print on my rice paper and then when it dries perhaps 
I'm going to spray the backs of them and see if the colour comes through that way so that I've still got the black line of the stained glass effect but with some colours as well. Well, this one we're just taking the paint off so we might experiment with this print because that could look quite cool as well. Right, so we're going to play with some of these prints, have a little experiment with some sprays. I'll just give it a bit of a clean up. It won't be perfect, but it's a little bit tidier than what it was. Because <laughs> I put on a bit thick paint. So that is the reason why my paint was so thick. Look at that beautiful stained glass pattern. Yes, I love it. that's going to pull a fabulous print and then when it dries we'll have a little experiment with the sprays and see how it looks look at that that is just perfect yay for my stained glass righto we'll let that dry and then we'll give it a spray from the back and see if that idea works this one's still a bit wet but i'm thinking we could experiment because we've got nothing to lose. Look how cool that looks. <laughs> and it's a lot quicker than brushing it in, let me tell you. <laughs> that took me a while to brush in those pearlescent watercolours, but they did look nice. Yes, I'm feeling stained glass. I'm feeling it. I know, it's opposite. <laughs> the line's supposed to be black. Yeah, I know, and the other colour is supposed to be in those shapes, but you know, we're just practicing. We're just trying our idea. These dilution sprays are really saturated in colour. They're rather beautiful, don't you think? They make good stained glass, oops, looking colours. <laughs> yes, that's just beautiful. Oh man, lost my yellow, not to worry. But yeah, that's working. Of course, if we use the Distress Oxide sprays, they're a lot more muted in colour. This is the one that pulled on the plate, so, you know, we got nothing to lose. I may as well try it. That works good. Oh, yes. Hello, baby. I don't mind that at all. A little bit of turquoise. See, we can save the print. It'll make great collage paper. Don't give up too easy. Don't throw away your prints, even if they completely stick on your plate and tear to pieces. You might still be able to create something with them. That's fabulous collage paper. I'm loving that. That looks great with the iridescent bronze fine. Yes, and I'm only going to rip it up anyway. This is another one of the ghost prints because I had the paint so thick I pulled two ghost prints. Now this one, the Distress Oxide, will cover the paint on this side because it is more opaque. But you know, I'm okay with that. These transparent inks of the Dilutions. Oh man, that one's empty. <laughs> Think. They're more transparent and they don't cover up the paint so much. We'll just go over the whole thing. <laughs> that looks better. <laughs> what about this one? Yes, these are the dilution ones. The stain of these ones, of these inks, is going to work better for this particular thing. What about an eye zinc one? What's it going to do? Oh, yeah, that works too. Oh, beautiful. Just beautiful. Look at those colours. You can even mix them with spraying it on top of each other. Loving it. It looks fabulous. It all works, except for the one that's empty. But I do like the splatter pattern. Oh, man. <laughs> that is so much fun. So this is the one that we were going to experiment with spraying on the back so we didn't paint over our fabulous black lines let's do that i'm thinking the distress oxides is what you're probably going to want to spray on the back more so because the other ones are okay they kind of soak into the paint whereas those distress ones sit on top of the paint 
But it's all fun for an experiment, don't you think? Let's spray some of these on the back and see what it does. Because it is rice paper, it should soak through. Hypothetically, of course, we need some more red. <laughs> Where's the red? Right, that'll work. Do I have to wait for it to dry? Oh man, I can't wait. I have to see what it looks like. So I'm putting it on another piece of plastic, which are just file folders. I like to use them all the time when I'm doing things because I can move the paper off the table. Oh yeah, that works, look at that. So there you go, that was sprayed on the other side and it's soaking through the rice paper. It'll probably look better as it dries. What happened to that section? Oh man, what happened to that section? Where's that? We need some more on that section. That's a bit lousy. Add some more to that section. Righto, well, yeah, the idea works. It does, it definitely does. But I think if you're using the dilutions or the eye zincs and they're more of a dye-based ink, then it doesn't matter because it doesn't really cover your paint and they're not so opaque. But the distressed oxides, you definitely, I think, if you want to paint the back, spray the back and let it soak through. But when I'm using the metallic colors, they, you don't really have to, I don't think, because the metallic, uh, paints kind of resist the sprays anyway like this one I'd sprayed on top and I think it's fine I think it works either way it was a whole lot of fun I absolutely loved all these experiments so which of these prints do you like the best which kind of application or experiment do you think actually worked <laughs> I really liked them I had a whole lot of fun all of these prints from one simple stencil too easy lemon squeezy and number three to find more inspiration for your art is to know yourself. What do you like? Out of all of these prints that I did today, which ones do you really like? Which ones do you not like? It really is okay to not like something because then you can find out what you do like. <laughs> So if you need more inspiration for your art, ask yourself, what do you like? What colors do you like? What textures do you like? Inspiration truly is everywhere. We can find it all around us when we go for a walk or when we go on a trip or even at home. The way you design your house, the clothes that you're wearing, there's so many colors and textures around you to be inspired. So it's just a matter of asking yourself, what do you like? Paying attention to what lights you up, what gets you out of bed in the morning, or what you keep going back to. What themes do you find reoccurring in your artwork? Or what colors do you just naturally gravitate to? If you're feeling a bit flat and you get up one day and you wanna create something, what's your favorite color? What's the first thought that pops into your mind? I want to use this color, or a particular technique, or a particular texture, even the tactile quality of making art can really be inspiring. So ask yourself, what do you like? And let that guide you in your next series or your next painting or your next drawing or artwork or any kind of creative expression. And let that be the inspiration of your next project. Thanks for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed my little trip to Barcelona. <laughs> And I can't wait to take you somewhere else next week. Don't forget, if you need more inspiration, relax. Find the space where you can just calm your mind and allow those creative thoughts to come. Try using a prompt or a theme or something that's going to help spark those creative ideas. And number three, ask yourself, what do you really like? I'll leave you with the playlist of 100 days of collage in case you've missed any. And did you see last week's episode? I'm telling you, it was really fun. Five time-saving tips when you're creating art. I love doing those time pieces. It was just fantastic. And I hope to see you again next time in the studio.